Okay, so can this expression be simplified? So what we have here is x plus y over x, and if it can be simplified, is it one of these, or maybe it's none of the above. Maybe this cannot be simplified. All right, so I'm gonna caution you, be very careful here, because a lot of you are going to be surprised you're gonna get this wrong. All right, but if you have the answer, well, go ahead and put that into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer here in just one second. Then, of course, we'll walk through exactly how to solve this problem step by step. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, well, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. All right, so let's gonna take a look at this uh, problem again. We have x plus y in the numerator over x. Now, I said be careful because a lot of students are gonna make an error, and it's a very, very, very common error. So hopefully, you didn't make this error. And as a matter of fact, let's take a look at our options here. So A is y, B is one plus y, C is one plus y over x, and D is none of the above. All right, so let's go and take a look at the correct answer. The correct answer is C, one plus y over x. All right, now, if you got this right, well, you definitely get a happy face and a plus a 100% and a certificate of excellence for simplifying basic rational expressions. So fantastic, great job. You didn't make this error. But uh, for those of you that got this wrong, I'm glad you made this mistake because this is a very common mistake. And by the time this video finishes, you'll never make this error again. All right, so let's go and get into the solution right now. So here is our problem. All right, so x plus y over x, and here is our choices. So obviously we know that uh, the answer is C, okay? But let's just kind of walk through how to, um, some common mistakes here. And again, if you made these errors, no big deal. We're gonna kind of explore right now how people make these errors. So let's suppose you answered with A. You're like, yes, I think the answer is uh, A, Mr. UT Math Man. Well, you likely uh, thought of this. You're saying, oh, I have an X here, an X here. These X's just look so fantastic. They look like they wanna cross cancel one another. And maybe I can just you know, cross cancel these X's, leaving me with a uh, lovely Y. So the answer is A, but unfortunately that is wrong. And I know a lot of you are gonna be like, all right, Mr. YouTube Math Man, this is why I don't like math. Well, don't get discouraged uh, because we're going to talk about why this is wrong right now. Now, if the problem was X times, this right here is an addition, let's forget about this, but what if this was multiplication, X times Y over X? Well, now these are factors. This is X plus Y, these are not factors. Factors, but uh, what a lot of people confuse is they look at this problem x plus uh, y and they're thinking in their brain of x times y. So in other words, if you had like x times y over x, well here indeed you can uh, cross cancel these like factors so the answer would be y. But again, that's only when you have factors. It's very much like when you're reducing a fraction like uh, let's say uh, 10 over 20, okay? So what's going on there is that the numerator is the same thing as one times 10, and the denominator is the same thing as two times 10, okay? So here we have a 10. Again, these numbers are factors. In other words, this, this multiplication indicates that these are the factors of these numbers, right? So factors are things separated by multiplication, not addition, right? So we have like factors in the numerator and denominator, we can cross cancel. Of course, 10 over 20 is equal to a one half, right? Again, factors, but here, uh, these are not factors, but a lot of students, you know, they just get confused when they're learning this stuff. So if this happened to you, well, again, I'm glad it did because you won't make this mistake. All right, so another way we kind of verify that this is not the, uh, not the case is just to think of, uh, uh, these variables uh, in just what some number value, okay, because these variables represent numbers. So let's uh, suppose x is the same thing as 2, and let's say y is 3. So our problem would be, uh, actually let me write this over here, 
x plus y, uh, so we could have like 2 plus uh, 3 over, I'm going to make this nice and color-coded so we can kind of see what's going on. So this would be x, right? And so we need another 2 down here. So this is an equivalent problem with numbers. So here we have what? Well, we have uh, 2 plus 3. Let me write that a little bit better. So 2 plus 3 over 2. So what's 2 plus 3 over 2? Well, 2 plus 3 is 5 over 2, 5 halves. That is the correct answer because we have a sum right here. So it's definitely not, we're, not, we're going to uh, cross cancel the 2s. The answer is not going to be 3, right? So 2 plus 3 over 2 is not 3, okay? So again, if you made this error, you know, you can always think about uh, numbers the next time you see a problem like this. All right, but that's uh, uh, the reason why some of you probably answered with why. All right, let's take a look at this next uh, option right here, 1 plus uh, y. So some of you might say, okay, x goes into x1, and now we have 1 plus y. Another very common type of error or another um, common type of response to a question like this. So again, this would not be correct, right? So uh, this would be the same thing as x goes into x1. So 2 goes into 2 right here, uh, 1. So that would be like 1 uh, plus 3, which of course is 4, right? So that's not the answer. Remember the answer right here is five halves. So anytime you are not quite sure about a factoring situation or a simplification situation, and it's just, you know, there's not too many variables involved, you can always replace those variables with numbers. That's a great way to kind of help you out. So again, this is not correct. All right, but again, you know, a lot of you out there are very tempted to say, oh yeah, look, X goes into X1. So x divided by x is 1, so 1 plus y is the same thing as 1 plus y, and there is my answer. Now here is another tip for you out there, uh, especially for those of you that are uh, math students or those of you who have to still take exams. Uh, and now multiple choice math questions are awesome because oftentimes you can use the answers to answer the question. But Math teachers are very tricky people, right? So you, you might be thinking to yourself, oh, they're kind of, you know, these people, they design these questions uh, purposely so I can get them wrong. Well, actually, you're kind of right. <laughs> I hate to break the news to you, but uh, we do put in uh, the wrong answers. But in other words, we're going to um, have common errors represented in the multiple choice questions. So you have to be very careful because a lot of you, are going to be upset. They're like, hey, I saw my answers, you know, during the test. Oh, there's my answer. There's my answer. And you're circling and then, you know, you're expecting like a 99% on your exam. And then you get back a C minus like 72%. And you can't believe it. You're shocked. Well, that's because I can guarantee you, your wrong answer is likely going to be represented in the multiple choice option. So the only way really to get around this is to understand this stuff completely. All right, now, obviously, the answer is not none of the above. So if you answer with none, maybe you had some other expression uh, here, and that's uh, perfectly fine. But this right here, 1 plus y over x, would be the correct answer. So why is that? Well, there's a couple things you could do uh, to check this. Okay, You could check uh, this expression, 1 plus y over x. Matter of fact, let's write this right here and see if you can get back to the original problem, one plus y over x. So this is really one over one, right? So we wanna think of this as a fraction. Now, what is the lowest common denominator here, right? So hopefully you're saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I've got one and x, so the LCD is x. So we can multiply this by x and this by x. So our uh, new situation would be what? x over x, right, uh, plus, I'm going to write this right here, y over x. All right, taking my time here. And now we have the same uh, denominator, which is x, right? We can't add fractions or subtract fractions unless we have the same denominator. Here we do. So we have x, and then what do we do? We add the numerator. So this would be x plus y. Okay, so in fact, this does work out. Now, that's a lot of work uh, to kind of do that, but you could do that. Okay, so if you're like, well, I'm not sure if this is right or wrong. If you have, you know, pretty good fraction skills, you could go through this process. But there's another thing you can do here, or another thing you can think about when you are looking with uh, looking at fractions with uh, the especially with a single denominator like x. Okay. All right. So I'm going to show you this technique right now, and uh, this is kind of going to wrap up this video. This is a great 
uh, thing to think about when you are looking at fractions. But first, let me go down here and show you this, and that is an invitation to support this channel. Now, why would you want to support this channel? Well, I am trying to help as many people as possible in math, and I've been able to reach a, a good amount of people but I want to reach more because I know there is a ton of people that are struggling in math. And uh, over the decades, you know, it's just it's math is one of these things that people really have. Uh, if they're not good in math, it really goes uh, into their thinking. They, they say, oh, I'm bad at math. You know, I'm not smart enough to learn math. All that is wrong, wrong, wrong. You have to stop this kind of negative self-talk if you are struggling in math. OK, if you're not understanding math, that's just your current situation. OK, I'm here to tell you, you can absolutely be successful in mathematics, but uh, there are no shortcuts. So if you're looking for quick little tutorials like, hey, I'm a student of math, man, I like to learn uh, calculus, but uh, I only have like 10 minutes. You know, can you uh, uh, teach me calculus in 10 minutes? Well, I can, you know, basically give you a fast, fast overview, overview of calculus, uh, but I cannot teach you calculus. You cannot learn math like super fast, like, you know, I only have enough time and I must, you know, master this stuff. So you got to be patient with the process. You got to put in the work. And the most important thing is you got to find a teacher that you'll like and understand. You need comprehensive math instruction. So if you're struggling with math, uh, and you want to learn from me, well, then check out my full main math courses. I'm going to leave links to those in the description of this video. But uh, what we're talking about right here, right here, what's stuff that you learn like in pre-algebra, algebra one. But uh, really what we're talking about is fractions. And for those of you out there that just kind of want to uh, relearn math from the ground up, Check out my two courses, my Math Foundations course. That's a Math Foundations course. That's a quick review of basic arithmetic and or my Math Skills Rebuilder course. This particular course, I start with basic math, but we go all the way into algebra, geometry, and some other things as well. All right, so let's finish this up by uh, using a technique or a strategy that you definitely want to keep in mind. So what we can do here is split the fraction. Here I say, split the fraction. What are you talking about, Mr. YouTube Math Man? Well, I'm going to show you right now. All right, so x plus y over x. So this is a great technique to think about this. Try to like reverse engineer. Uh, this is the kind of the answer to a question. So you can break these fractions apart. So the way we're going to do that is write uh, uh, each one of the um, terms uh, in the numerator and uh, in the numerator over a separate a denominator. Matter of fact, I'm just going to write this out because it's more, it's more confusing to say it than actually see it. All right. So what I can do is, is say, okay, I'm going to split this. So I'm going to take this. I'm going to write this as its own separate fraction, x over x plus y over x. Okay. So here, if I had this as a problem, could we do this problem? We're like, oh, well, we have the same denominator, x and x. So we just simply add the numerator, x plus y. OK, but also I can break these up. OK, and this is going to come up later in algebra and in even in more advanced algebra. We want to kind of break this up into separate fractions. Now, if we take a look at this, x divided by x is what? Well, anything divided by itself is one. So this is nothing more than one plus y over x, which, of course, is our answer. OK, so remember this little strategy and remember these tips here, too, in terms of um, when you're not sure and you have variables uh, variables in a problem and you have various answers, it's a great uh, little uh, approach to replace these variables with numbers. And you can't do this all the time in algebra, but pretty frequently you can that can help you kind of see whether you're going in the right direction or the wrong direction. All right, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.